People who used to not believe in ghosts but do now. What experience changed your mind? When my son was a baby, he started crying in his crib at about 3am. I sat up, dreading having to nurse him back to sleep for the third time that night. All of a sudden, I hear a soft, sweet, woman's voice over the baby monitor say, SHHH, don't cry, go to sleep, and my son settled right down back to sleep. In my sleep deprived state, I was like, cool, she's got him and I went back to sleep myself. When I woke up that morning, I was like, did I just let a ghost nanny take care of my baby? Can she come back tonight? She did not. But I did constantly see orbs fly around over his crib over the video monitor which were clearly not bugs or dust. Um, your baby monitor might be hacked. I have two stories. The first used to happen when I lived in a large house that had been converted into several flats in South London. There was one flat above me and my wife and we knew the woman upstairs quite well and we would know she was out because her car wouldn't be in the shared driveway. On many occasions when the upstairs neighbor was out I would hear footsteps in the flat above me even though we knew the upstairs neighbor wasn't home. The floors were wooden and I could hear the wood creaking during the footsteps so it was definitely something moving around up there. The upstairs neighbor didn't have a partner or friends that may be staying over it was also far too small for anyone to live up there without us hearing or knowing. The second is a bit more strange than the first. In around 2001 a good friend of mine died of cancer in his early 20s. He was a tall guy called James and he had short blonde hair. Fast forward to around 2010 and my best friend's nephew who was about 7 at the time was round at his grandmother's house. The nephew was out in the hallway playing by himself when his grandmother, my best mate's mother, heard the young boy start up a conversation with someone in the hallway. The grandmother didn't think much of it as kids often chatter when they play but when the nephew came into the front room the grandmother asked who he was talking to. The nephew said he was talking to James out in the hallway. Naturally the grandmother was a bit alarmed that someone was in the house talking to a child. She asked the nephew a few more questions about who he was talking to out in the hallway and of course he gave a good description of my friend James who had died 10 years or so beforehand and had been to the house many times before he died. The nephew would have never met James as he wasn't born when James died and would have had no reason to lie or make something up like that. That one gives me goosebumps even as I write it. Speaking for my wife, I grew up in a house that was haunted so I know what's out there but my wife has always been a skeptic and gave me crap for believing in the paranormal and being spiritual until we moved into our house. She has seen and still sees a couple dressed in white in our backyard staring at our house. At night she will hear a giggle and doors close. She tried to rationalize what she seen until one day she saw a lady floating over our bed. That did it and now she takes what I say seriously. Seeing a ghost, I lived in a haunted house. I would see the previous owner in shadowy corners or in the attic window when I was outside. There was a black cat that would show up in the house and disappear, but I couldn't find where it was getting in or out. Sometimes I would leave the spoon in my coffee and it would just start stirring itself. A fork left on the edge of a plate would fly through the air like someone smacked the end of it. Sometimes I would find the door to the little closet in the dining room open, and close it, and it would be open when I came back. Once I put a piece of furniture in front of it and I came back through the room and it was moved and the door was open again. I started saying, okay, I know you're here if my coffee started stirring itself and the spoon would stop. Imagine you build a great house and then you die and you never want to leave but maybe you don't know you are dead and everyone just ignores you. Once when I worked as a housekeeper in a nursing home. I worked very early in the morning and I always stopped by this one lady's room because she was always awake and sitting in her recliner. And she always had a pretty sweater on. One morning I went in to say hi and she looked so beautiful. She smiled and waved at me. It was like she was glowing. Her hair looked amazingly white and she had on a pink sweater. She radiated light. I went on with a few more rooms then met up with colleagues for a coffee break and one said to me we have to do a complete cleaning of room. I can't remember number. Because the lady passed at midnight. You guessed it that lady that room. I never ever forgot how beautiful she looked at 4am. After my aunt Joan. Dad's sister. Died at 40 of alcoholism. We had a few experiences. 1. 
I was like 5 when this all happened and my dad and I were over at his parents house taking care of it while my grandparents were out of state with one of my dad's remaining sisters. He was in the guest room and I was in the room my aunt slept in when she lived there in high school. My dad calls out I'm going downstairs now and a voice like my aunt's calls out okay. I asked him about this a few weeks ago, almost exactly 20 years from when it happened, but my dad understandably doesn't remember a lot from that point in his life, including that moment. 2. The day after the funeral for my aunt, my other aunt was back home in Pennsylvania. We are in Colorado where the funeral was held, and my living aunt was still having a hard time taking her sister's death. She and her husband walk in the house after getting home off their flight and find a message on their answering machine. It's from some stranger in New York who was asked to call my aunt's number and deliver the message that Joan is okay, you don't have to worry, he didn't know who the caller was, just that he was given the number and the message to relay. Pretty much my entire family understands it would have to be a coincidence of cosmic proportions if that's all it was. She's in a better place now. While I miss her, I know she was released of terrible suffering and I'm glad for that. Nice to know that the afterlife is in New York. Or at least uses their telephone code. I have a couple of stories, even though nobody believes them. Good thing I have witnesses, so my mind is at peace. As a background, growing up I was always taught by my dad to never be afraid of ghost spirits. As if they existed, he would have seen his grandma again. The person he loved the most until she passed away. First story, when I was 12, one of my aunts, dad's sister, was visiting us after years of living outside my country. At night, they were remembering stuff from the past, and started telling me and my siblings about their childhood stories. At some point they talked about all the horrible things that their stepmother did to them. From forcing my dad to sleep on their house roof at night, to breaking plates on my aunt's head when she didn't like the food this woman cooked. Out of nowhere, my aunt turns very pale and starts to hyperventilate, then choke. Then in between what we thought was a panic attack, she said something along the lines of, leave, alone, freaking, mouth, and as she passes out, a neighbor from across the street was a doctor, so my dad ran to get her, she checked her, and she said she was good, and looked like she was just sleeping, out of nowhere, my aunt wakes up and starts crying nonstop. the doctor, and my dad tried calming her down, and my mom hushed us out of the living room. While she was crying, I could hear she was telling my dad it was her, it was her, she was screaming at me, she wanted us to leave her alone, to get her name out of our freaking mouths. Years later, as I questioned if this might have been a response to stress caused by reliving those traumas, and not a supernatural occurrence, I talked to my cousins about it, but they were all surprised, as this has never happened before. Even though she would always tell them the stories of her stepmother, so my theory was out of the question. Thoughts? Alive or dead, your dad's stepmother was evil. My dad died, after I found out I went home. My parents were separated so my mom and dad each had a house. My mom is disabled and has a two story house. It's very hard for her to go up and down the stairs. My old bedroom was upstairs. I got in the house about 2 in the morning with my husband. We were laying in the bed and my husband instantly fell asleep. I was too upset to sleep. My door was cracked and I saw a shadow pass by my door. I thought it was my mom checking to make sure I got home okay. After a few hours of not sleeping I went downstairs to get coffee and my mom was there. I said thanks for checking on me last night. She looked very confused and said I didn't go upstairs at all last night. I'm convinced it was my dad checking on me. Over a couple of weeks years ago living with my ex while we were in the shower together the bathroom door got knocked on extremely hard and aggressively. Got out and opened it basically straight away and there was no one there. No one was in the house and all the doors were locked. We also had the cliche footsteps and I remember one night there was this weird music coming from nowhere but still in the house. That was whack. A Friday night. Maybe Saturday. It was years ago now. Some teenagers from next door came and knocked saying there was someone in the house with them they were alone for the weekend. So my mates and I plus them and my partner went out with them. We saw the lights go out all at once but no one came out. The cops came and called for backup. They went through and found no one after looking for like 15 minutes. 
The thing is though, unless whoever was in there could climb 4 meters in a few seconds the only way to the street was past us. They stayed with us the night but we never heard anything about it again. They also moved away maybe a month after I think. The last thing that went down over those weeks was the one that freaked with me the most. I heard as clear as day my name said right behind me and then footsteps above me while doing some early morning weekend work. I used to work in a very high security facility and for someone else to be in the building they would have to have been let in by me and couldn't be in there before me as the alarms couldn't be deactivated without my fingerprint. I almost crapped myself and after talking with my boss on the phone and checking that there really wasn't anyone else there besides me. No cars besides my work car and my private car locked in the grounds with the other work cars. There I bailed and never did Saturday mornings alone. After that, nothing ever happened and nothing before. I still think about those weeks all the time. It was freaking weird and I have no explanation besides fricked if I know. Ghosts. Go I don't know if it was an actual ghost or if I was just freaking tired. I was alone at the flat and was pulling an all nighter before a big event the following day. I decided to lie down on my bed to relax a bit and took the fetal position on my queen size bed. The lights were on. My laptop was on and the temperature was normal. Suddenly I hear a voice saying, My name is Alice. I've always wondered what it would be like to attempt a convo with a ghost and decided now was the freaking time to do it. So I reply, Hi Alice. My body then proceeds to go into shock. Like an electric bolt is raging around my body. I had no control over it. Every cell in my body was vibrating. I kept repeating a prayer until the shaking stopped and then stood up and continued the work I was doing. Not me but my dad. He was sitting in his chair in the library facing the dining room. Saw the girl come down the stairs, turn at the landing, and go into the dining room. Thought it was me. Went back to his paper. Then saw it again. Called up the stairs. I hadn't moved. We were home alone at the time. We were doing major roof renovations and maybe it was a loosened house memory more so than ghost, but he was a lot less skeptical when we told him something was going on in the house. My wife's mother died only shortly after we got engaged. My wife was the first daughter to get engaged and grandma was very excited. Both of her older brothers were married and had given her five grandsons but no granddaughters. Grandma's first response to the engagement was you're going to be the one to give me a granddaughter. We got married months after she passed and had our first child, a daughter. A few years later, we traveled to my wife's hometown to show off the baby as soon as possible but she was about 6 months old by then. We went to see grandma's sister who looked strikingly like grandma. My little 6 month old girl freaked out when she answered the door. She almost jumped out of my wife's arms trying to get to her aunt. She got a second look and went limp and slumped in disappointment when she saw she didn't know this person after all. My wife and I were convinced that my daughter thought she was seeing her grandmother who had apparently been visiting her from beyond or knew her before she was born and that they had a very strong bond without having met in the flesh. This is gonna be buried, but I went to NYC to spend a week with a friend after I graduated. She took off from work but there was an emergency so she got called in and so I stayed at her apartment with her dog. She told me she sometimes had off feelings in the apartment but she had it blessed so whatever. Anyway, me and Doggy are watching Bar Rescue at about 1pm as we wait for her to get back when suddenly the dog makes a low growl and runs to the kitchen. I think hey, maybe she smelled a mouse. So I follow. I see the dog, crouched low and loudly growling at a human shaped shadow figure maybe 6 feet tall, who is standing back away from her, as the dog moves between me and the thing. I loudly gasp, and the thing's head turns to me and then its arms go up and it steps back in what looks like surprise. I don't think it thought it could be seen. I just manage to stammer out a prayer and tell it that it has to leave and not come back. It backs through the wall and it's gone. Terrifying. Just terrifying. I was always open to the idea, but wasn't convinced. That changed a couple of days after my grandfather died. I was in my room at night, thinking about him, when I suddenly felt as if someone was rustling my hair. There are no vents in the ceiling in my room. My fan wasn't on. It was a very slow, deliberate feeling as if a hand was very slowly running its fingers through my hair. It's more religious but a few years ago my little sister with down syndrome ran away from our house, not knowing better. 
and we couldn't find her for an hour. I ran around for a while and came to a crossroads on the golf course in our neighborhood. I didn't know where to go but I saw a bright flash to my right. It was just a field of grass. There was nothing reflective there. And so I went that way and that's where I found her. I swear it was an angel to this day. I love this. The weirdest thing that happened to me was a story my mom told me a few years ago which brought me from Adam and ghosts don't exist to holy crap maybe they do. A few weeks before I was born, my great grandma died. She was so excited to meet me and hold me since I was to be her only great granddaughter. I've always felt a strong connection to her. Well, when I was 5, my mom was driving me home and completely out of the blue I told my mom mom I really want to take a bath when I get home. Grandma Wilson told me last night that baths are a lot of fun. I didn't disbelieve in spirits or ghosts, but I felt more certain after my great aunt died when I was in college. She died on a different continent and had never visited me in my hometown, which is where I also went to university. I was in the school library waiting for a study partner and looking at a memorial photo of her that my cousin had sent me when I felt this warmth around my neck and back and could smell this perfume my mother wears. It was overpowering. I called my mom to tell her about it and she was shocked. Because she had never told me my great aunt wore the same perfume. I had met her once in my life and we weren't super close. But she was always sweet to us. My mom and I are both certain my great aunt visited to say goodbye because I was thinking of her that day. Talk to my mother's second cousin after my grandmother's burial. Year or two later find out he had died in 2013. Grandma's funeral was in 2015. The burial was in the same graveyard. There have been several experiences in my family and I have personally seen some kind of blue translucent figure in my room when I was younger and my mum claims to have saw a young girl in her room at night once. The biggest experience though and the one that really converted me involved my youngest brother. My brother is 13 years younger than me and growing up, he'd often play in his room. Me and my mum would often hear him talking to somebody as if he was playing with them. Things like peekaboo, playing with his toys, etc. We thought nothing of it and that it was just like an imaginary friend or something. This went on for a few years. When he was around 5 years old, he's 12 now, he got a PlayStation and started playing video games a lot more, as well as spending more time with his friends he'd met in school. One night while he's playing his game, me and my mum hear him screaming from his bedroom and we rush upstairs. My brother has dropped the controller with the game unpaused, something he never did, and he was on the bed he had been sitting, and it was as if he was trying to drag himself away from something at the bottom of the bed. He was screaming get off me, get off me and I don't want to play with you anymore while frantically trying to get away from something. But the creepiness didn't end there because of his legs was in the air awkwardly as if something had a hold of him and was dragging him back down the bed. My mum ran over and grabbed him, and carried him downstairs and called my granddad over to basically just reassure us. We haven't had any experiences since that. Like I said he's 12 now and this was 7 years ago. He still remembers it happening but he refuses to talk about it, and if it is mentioned, though we don't make a habit of it of course, he gets very scared and has nightmares at night. It doesn't really matter what else me or my mum have seen. Nothing comes close to that experience. I was probably in early high school or late middle school at home with my sister of 4 years younger and our dog. Our dog was very calm indoors and he rarely ever barked and never acted aggressive. All of a sudden, he got really aggressive defensive near our back door kitchen and stared and growled at the corner ceiling of the room. The corner was completely empty, and there wasn't anything we could see. We tried to pull him away but he wouldn't budge. I checked the window curtains for any bugs or anything but nothing was there, and he fixated his gaze above the curtains. I went out to the backyard and peeked up and down my driveway as well to see if maybe my dog heard something from outside. But nope, opening the door didn't interest him at all. My sister and I kind of stared at each other, and that sent chills down both of our spines. As just our looks at each other confirmed we were both experiencing this thing. We didn't say a word to each other in the moment, but I'm pretty sure we were both thinking some paranormal crap was there that our dog sensed. I don't remember how when our dog finally snapped out of it. My sister also experienced weird crap in that house, brand new in a nice suburb, multiple times after, but by us, by us, by us, by
My brother was looking through some old photographs with my mom and I. He pointed to one of my grandfather and said that's my friend Tom. He plays pretend with me he'd never seen that grandfather before. He's never even heard his name. The creepiest part? That grandfather had been dead for nearly 3 decades. Long before I was born. I started reading tarot cards when I was 14. I didn't have any beliefs in ghosts at the time. A friend of mine. Thought. Felt there was presence there. So I used my cards to identify what it was. The card's description perfectly matched her grandfather who died of cancer some years prior. I also met and befriended a ghost of a girl who committed suicide back in high school. Yet, yeah. needless to say, I am a firm believer in ghosts now. My mom said that my grandfather's ghost visited our house. She said she came downstairs to check on me, a mavi, rambling toddler at the time, and found dad asleep in his recliner. She went in my room, and after seeing me, came back to wake dad. As she entered the living room, she encountered a thick whirling mass of smoke, watched it lean over dad's head as if to kiss his forehead, then it drifted straight by her into my room. It lingered there for a bit, then vanished. Now, you may not believe, but dad and I do. The next morning, dad was having breakfast when I came into the kitchen saying, Hi Gus. Hi Gus mom says dad went white as a sheet, and asked, where the heck did he get that mom had no idea. I was always babbling, but she said he looked so upset she had to ask why. Turns out, grandpa called dad Gus, but only in private. I guess it was kinda their thing, and hearing it hit dad pretty hard. I was born on the 13th of August, 1969. Grandpa King was elated when he learned mom was pregnant with me, and doted on her daily. Calls, gifts, hugs, hand holding. He was tickled to death. Four days before I was born, he died in his sleep, and never got to meet me, till he came to visit. Two of my best friends and my closest cousin passed away, all at separate times, although I loved these three people. I had never dreamt of any of them. That was until after they passed. One dream for each of them that consisted of myself and them just talking and hanging out like normal. Those three dreams would be the only time I had ever dreamt of any of them. Each dream was extremely realistic to the point where I thought I was experiencing it first hand up until I woke. At first I thought it was just me missing them. But after the last dream, I was left with the feeling that these were their final goodbyes. As soon as I moved into my current house, seen a year of high school I moved into my current house that was built in the late 1800s and is quite the history to it. Every night I heard a what seems to be big band music that you can't fully make out. I just pushed it off as white noise or my someone else's TV in the house since my room was connected to this big hallway upstairs. After summer passed I had to take out my window AC unit, which created a lot of noise in my room. Soon after it was taken out the big band music played again. This time it played it was very vivid since my room now is dead silent. And what followed the music was light talking and then walking every couple minutes. Eventually it got to the point where the walking felt like someone was walking up to my door and about to open it. I had that feeling most nights. Terrified I told my parents and they confirmed they hear it too. Oddly enough they are obsessed with it love that there are ghosts in the house. Long story short we had a regional paranormal team come and do an investigation and confirm that the house was haunted but there are no bad ghosts or anything with malicious intent in the house. Four years later I have to come back from college every summer and winter break to deal with abnormal mischief at night. After a couple years you kinda get used to it. The way I see it is like you're living with a drunk person. They whisper moan about stuff in the past. They stumble and make noise all the time. And they always end up waking you up at night lol. Notable moments. Black silhouette by a doorway of my basement like 2am one night. My dog getting randomly angry and barking at nothing in the hallway when we were home alone one day. He's typically the most mellow dog. I saw a door close on its own one time. Most terrifying thing. When I was little I woke up to a ghostly pale old lady standing next to my bed which caused me to scream and my dad ran into the room. Saw her then yelled at the old lady and then she vanished. We still have no idea what she wanted or who she was. Another story was when me and my friends witnessed a toaster fly off the counter and go 20 feet across the house. 
Wow you've got the rare opportunity to have the apparition still be there when your dad showed up. It always seems they disappear whenever another parent or person is called over to where they're seeing something. Ghosts would be pushing it, but presents. My brother passed away young. 25, he for some reason was a big Frank Sinatra fan. Shortly after, my sister and I were flipping through the channels and we stumbled on an old Sinatra concert. We smiled and kept it on. Conjured up good memories of our brother. Fast forward 3 minutes. We realized we're not big Sinatra fans so I moved the channel up down one station. It was the TV show Taxi. The one where Iggy Jim Magnitovsky was trying to be the best cab driver he could be by offering impeccable service. We jumped in at the exact time he was offering his fare some coffee and asked him if he's like to hear some music. It was a Sinatra rendition sung by Iggy himself. Very funny scene. To us it was as if my brother was still there. Understood we weren't big Sinatra fans and said here's one you'll like. Have a laugh with me. My 4 year old son knows some really specific things about my dad. Who died about 2 months after my son was born. The two of them never actually met because my dad was already in the hospital when my son was born. About a year or so before he got sick. He bought some kayaks for him and my mom. They also sold them before my son was even born. And we didn't even realize he knew what a kayak was. One day we saw some kayaks at the store. And my son points at them and says those are just like what grandpa bought for grandma. He has never known that either of them owned a kayak. Still don't have an explanation for that one. He also used my grandpa's name from out of nowhere too. My grandpa died when I was 9. So about 15 years before my son was born. And he also has never heard that name said out loud. My dad passed away in 2015. Someone called me from my dad's cell phone on my home phone. My dad's cell phone was on the table in the next room. I didn't pick it up. I always wish I did. No one else lives with me except my mom who was with me at the time. My cousin Jeannie died when she was young. A teenager. She was hit by a train when crossing the tracks. Anyway. Fast forward a few years and my aunt is pregnant. Her and her husband decide to name the baby Jeannie after the Jeannie that died. Not her parents, just relatives that were close to her. Well baby Jeannie grows up but constantly plays and talks to what seems like herself. Despite having two sisters, we just put it off as her liking to do her own thing. By now Jeannie is a few years older and her little brother is born. Sorry for all the background story but I felt it was important. Anyways, I'm like 14 at this point and I'm babysitting the kids. There's twins which are 5, Jeannie's 2 and baby brother is an infant. Their parents leave for a short time, I don't remember why. Maybe just to run to the store? Anyway, I'm making the kids sandwiches for lunch. I have them all sitting in the living room watching TV. Then I look up and I see Jeannie running down the hallway back to her room so I yell out Jeannie. Come back in here then I turn to look in the living room where the kids are all there. Including baby Jeannie. Staring at me like I'm crazy. I brush it off thinking I just imagined something. Then later on that day their parents were back so I went outside to jump on the trampoline with the three oldest kids. I look up because I see someone pulling back the curtains in the window facing us. There was a little girl standing and watching us. I could see her so clearly. Long brown hair, blue eyes, and a dress. Those experiences definitely made me believe in ghosts. Plus later on the youngest child always talked about genie in heaven and knowing the other genie. I'm not religious but it was very weird to hear him talk about the dead genie that we've never mentioned before. For baby genie also continued to play with what seemed like no one for a few years until she got older. She's 13 now and I've never asked her about it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.